Hero Brine is the most infamous creepy pasta in Minecraft, which is why for the next 100 days, I'll be surviving as the even more terrifying Blood Hero Brine. I'll use my incredible powers to haunt players while growing even bigger and stronger forms. But it won't be easy because the anti creepy pasta organization is trying to stop me. Will I be able to escape extermination or will I get deleted from the seed? You'll have to watch until the end to find out. On day one, I spawned into my blood forest home as blood hero brine. Consumed by hunger, I staggered off the throne and began to hunt for food. Soon, I was lurking behind the trees, watching a lost player wander around in fear. <laughs> this is going to be fun. I crept up behind them, my unnatural nature keeping me dead silent. But before I could take their blood, a man in a tank mowed down the forest with his machinery. Looks like you fell right into my trap. He shot his weapons, causing my home to be set ablaze. I watched in horror as flames consumed everything. Before I could react, his guards swarmed after me. Don't let that dangerous entity escape. Yes, sir. I tried to fight back with my blood powers, but these players were unlike anything I had ever faced before. They had specialized weapons that could endure the attacks of a creepy pasta. At last, the organization will kill all of you terrible monsters. The leader hit me with his rocket launcher, leaving me with low health. I knew I didn't stand a chance and ran away while I still could. On day two, I was being chased through the blazing blood forest by the organization guards. Suddenly, a tree collapsed in front of me, blocking my path. I was trapped. Nowhere to run. Surround the monster. I was quickly surrounded by the armored men. They revved their chainsaws and pointed their shotguns at me. No, I won't give up here. I unleashed my blood hero brine powers and teleported past the tree. What? No, don't let him escape. Thanks to my quick thinking, I was able to run ahead and get away from the guards. However, an even more powerful elite organization member soon stopped me on the other side. You may have escaped my allies, but you won't escape me. He unleashed powerful laser attacks on me. I tried to fight back, but I was too weak. My blood slashes did nothing, and he berated me with stop sign attacks and shotgun blasts. No, my reign of terror can't end here. Just as I thought I was done for, giant Alex came to help. She knocked him back with a ground shaking stomp, buying us some time. Come with me before it's too late. I didn't hesitate and chased after my fellow cursed mob. On day three, I followed giant Alex to a ritual circle where a blood artifact was sitting at the center. Behind us, the elite guard was closing in. Get back here. Grab the artifact. I did what Alex told me to and grabbed the artifact, causing my body to transform. My limbs grew longer and I sprouted four bone spines from my back. I now had five more hearts and better blood powers. Take this. Using my new abilities, I took down the elite guard just before he was about to catch up. It worked. The blood artifact can make blood cryptids like he's stronger. If you find all six, you might be able to defeat the organization. I'll do anything to keep us monsters on top. Too bad you two are going down. The organization commander had arrived and unleashed sleeping gas on the entire area. Giant Alex fell as the gas quickly took effect. Run, Hero Bright. You're our last hope. I made a run for it before the gas could get to me too. On days four through five, I was trying to escape the gas-filled area, but I was already beginning to feel its effects. There has to be cover around here somewhere. I looked around and found a cavern, which I fled into before I could be captured too. You can run, but you can't hide from the organization. Once I was finally out of the gas, I realized I was now in a large tunnel system. As I delved further, organization guards began to pour in from one of the passages. There's the blood hero, Brian. Get him. You guys just don't give up. I tried to fight back with my new abilities. And while I was now able to take down a few of them, their weapons were too powerful for me to fight alone. I ran down one of the passages towards a dead end and used my powers to make the entrance collapse behind me. Try breaking through that. Don't let him escape. Everybody, dig. I was feeling good about my escape when suddenly parts of the walls began to spring leaks around me, pouring lava into the cavern. There was no way out, and I was about to be burnt to death. 
On days six through seven, I searched for a way out of the cavern as the lava levels continued to rise around me. I tried mining my way out, but without a tool, I couldn't break down the rocks fast enough. I can't die here. Just as I thought I was done for, more of my powers activated. Thanks to my creepypasta abilities, I was able to levitate blocks. I can bend the world to my will. I used my powers to manipulate the blocks into an exit and narrowly escaped the flooding cavern. When I made it to the surface, I discovered a blood temple standing tall and daunting in the distance. Between us was a massive pool of lava. Having grown used to the darkness of the caves, the light of the morning sun hurt my eyes. With my goal right in front of me, I can't let a little sunlight stop me. The next artifact must be waiting inside that temple. I activated my teleportation powers and moved from platform to platform to get closer towards the artifact. The unstable footing and intense heat made each teleport dangerous, but being being a powerful cursed entity, nervousness was a stranger to me. I was nearly at the shrine, when suddenly the platform I was standing on crumbled beneath my feet. I plummeted towards the lava pit below. On days 8 through 9, I activated my powers and barely managed to teleport to another platform before hitting the deadly lava pit below. Yikes! This place is dangerous! Undeterred, I pushed on. I finally made it inside the temple, where I saw the next blood artifact waiting. The Grand Hall clearly belonged to somebody, but I saw nobody around. Well, don't mind if I do. As I stepped forward to claim my prize, I was confronted by a blood golem. On my I do, and I am the most powerful blood monster, so it is mine by right. I teleported next to the artifact to get a quick grab at it, but the blood golem turned and hit me with his blood slam. I'll make you pay for that. As I was still reeling from the blow, he grabbed the blood artifact himself, causing him to transform into a massive empowered form. Looks like I'll just have to show you who the stronger creepypasta is. Die for desecrating the temple of the blood golem! The two of us charged at each other, full speed, and prepared for battle. On days 10 through 12, I was fighting the upgraded blood golem in an attempt to claim the blood artifact for myself. In his new form, he was able to manipulate both blood and earth. I tried to evade them with my teleportation abilities, but he was able to predict where I was going. Oh, I'm a blood creature like you. I know your every move. We both had telekinetic rock powers, but his were much stronger than mine. He summoned a powerful earthquake. I tried to teleport out of the way, but he still managed to hit me. He roared and swung at me with a powerful fist attack while I continued launching stones at him. I knew at this rate I was going to lose the battle, but I managed to come up with an idea. I lured the giant golem outside and towards the end of the collapsed bridge and hit the ground with one of my blood attacks. <laughs> I wasn't aiming for you. Suddenly, the ground crumbled under his feet as I teleported away, causing him to fall into the lava. I thought I had outsmarted him, but to my surprise, he re-emerged and hit me with a powerful blow, leaving me with low health. So long, hero Brian. He readied himself for the final attack when out of nowhere, sleeping gas filled the area and the organization showed up. Oh no, they found us! On days 13 through 15, the organization guards poured into the room, blocking our escape. The sleeping gas took effect on the blood golem, causing him to collapse to the ground. He dropped the artifact and transformed back to his normal state. Now's my chance. I grabbed the artifact, causing me to transform once again. I grew even bigger in size and gained another pair of arms. I now had five hearts and now had frozen blood powers. Face the wrath of Blood Hero Brine! I unleashed my abilities onto the organization threat, causing them to fall one after another. I lashed out with frozen blood, sharp spikes jetting out from the ground to spear the organization members through. With another swing of my arm, I threw out projectiles of blood, dealing loads of damage all at once. I was unstoppable. Finally, I was able to take out all of the last of the guards, just as the blood golem woke up from his slumber. You saved me. 
Why? I realized that us creepypasta have to stick together, or else the organization is going to kill us all. Then you've got yourself a new ally, even if you are wrong about who is the strongest blood mob. I don't know, man. I just got two more arms and frozen blood powers. Just then, I spotted a map one of the guards had dropped in battle, titled Cryptid Prison. Giant Alex must be trapped here. Looks like it's time for a rescue mission. On days 16 to 18, we followed the map until I made it to the prison, where I immediately spotted giant Alex in a massive cage. There she is. Now I've just got to get to her. Sounds good. I got your back. I waited for the guards to walk by, then teleported beside her. You don't cry. What are you doing here? We're here to break you out. This is impossible. The only way I'd be able to get out of here is if I could shrink down. Apparently, I'd been standing around too long because a guard spotted me. Blood Hero Brian is here. Get him. Guards came running for me, but the Blood Golem intercepted their attacks. Find the Blood Villagers. They can help you get a shrinking device to free Giant Alex. The guards continued to attack the Blood Golem as I ran. Eventually, they captured him. But thanks to his sacrifice, I was able to escape the prison. I need to find those Blood Villagers and save my friends before it's too late. On days 19 to 22, I traveled in the dead of night until I spotted something red and brown scurry out of the corner of my eye. Was that a blood villager? You're not escaping me. I chased after them, and soon I was led to a civilization full of blood villagers. Sure enough, at the center of their town was the shrinking device I needed to save my friends. I tried to go up to the device to grab it, but before I could get too far, the elder villager came out to stop me. Stop right there, thief. If you wish to obtain our device, you must beat us in a building contest. A building contest? I thought you would all attack me, and like a horde. What is this, a zombie movie? I mean, we do do that, just not to other blood entities. Well then, bring it on. The trial began, and the blood villagers, expert builders stepped up to the task, building a house faster than I had ever seen. It didn't take long for the cursed dwelling to be constructed in its entirety. Haha, beat that. All right, here goes nothing. I used my powers to manipulate blocks to make a massive group of pyramids in one fell swoop. I won by a landslide. Oh, I, I spoke too soon. You may claim your prize. I obtained the device when suddenly the area was swarmed with organization members. Somehow they had found me. On days 23 to 26, I was fighting off the organization members, but more and more continued to arrive into the area. Not only were the small fry there, but two elite guards were there trying to defeat me together. Ah, how do you keep finding me? I have a bad feeling about this. Suspicious, I teleported to a safe spot and checked my inventory and realized that a tracker had been placed on me without my knowledge. You need to destroy that thing. Come with me. What about the villagers? We are a cursed village. We will be fine. I followed the elder villager as more organization members chased after the two of us. Using my frozen blood, I protected the elder at all cost. We managed to fight our way through them until I finally arrived at a massive blood lake. Hide in the lake. It should destroy the tracker. On it, I dove into the lake, causing the tracker to malfunction. However, before I could come up for air, the guards came up to the shore, looking for me, shoving the elder aside. Where did he go? Where did who go? I held my breath until they left, narrowly making it to the surface before I would drown. Thanks for the help. Now, it's time to save my friends. On days 27 to 30, I returned to the prison where I found both giant Alex and the blood golem in danger of being executed. Blood Hero Brian to the rescue. Thankfully, I was able to teleport to them just in time. Moving as quick as I could, I shrunk down Alex so she could escape her cage. The moment she exited, I grew her back to her giant size. Thanks for the help, Hero Brian. Now, time to have some fun. She began to destroy the place like a kaiju, freeing the trapped blood golem in the process. Together, the three of us trashed the prison and managed to free all the other cryptids inside. Suddenly, I spotted a guard about to get a sneak attack on the blood golem. Look out! I threw the shrinking device at him, causing it to break, but I managed to take the guard out. Together, we all escaped before reinforcements arrived. Are you okay? Thanks to you, I am. While I was trapped, found out some intel on where the next blood artifact is. Let's go. On days 31 to 34, I arrived at the next ritual site with Giant Alex. It's really here. I could feel its power nearby. Told you I got some good intel. 
as we approached closer, we found the entrance was blocked by an immovable door. It looks like you'll have to offer a sacrifice of blood to get inside. Then here goes nothing. I presented myself to the door, and suddenly my health began to drop. Slowly, my health drained until I got down to only half a heart. Luckily, it was just enough for the door to finally open before me. Suddenly, a little blood knight ran in front of me and through the door. <laughs> Thanks for the free pass in, loser. The little blood knight ran off, quick as a bullet. Hey, get back here. I ran behind them and squeezed through just before the door shut. Inside, I spotted the next artifact, but I was too late. The little blood knight grabbed it right off the altar before I could. Before my eyes, they transformed into a much more powerful form. <laughs> so much power, but I need more power, and you're gonna give it to me. What? Do I look like a battery pack to you? You look like dinner. Without another word, they attacked me. On days 35 to 38, the empowered Blood Knight charged rapidly towards me, ready to attack. He summoned minions by pulling them straight out of the ground and then did a swing attack. I hit them with my blood ice attack, but there were so many. They kept throwing more and more minions at me as I launched the frozen blood at them. Tombstones then popped out of the ground by their power, creating spirits that attacked me from every angle. Their power was strong, but I wouldn't back down. I transported out of the way while getting the attacks and retaliated by throwing my boulders left and right, conquering them with every hit. I better keep this up. One hit and I'm done for. I can't let them win. I managed to land numerous hits on them, dwindling their health until they grew weak enough for one final blow. I knocked the artifact off of them and claimed it for myself, instantly gaining five hearts and the power to create a blood storm. The blood knight returned to its normal size, bowing in front of me after losing the artifact. You truly are the superior blood creature. I'll follow you until the end of time. Blood Knight, follow me. We must gather the rest of the artifacts. Out of nowhere, numerous elite guards flooded the temple, ready to engage in a fight. Time to show them my new power. I fought the invaders off with my Bloodstorm attack. While engaging in combat, a one-eyed robot walked into the temple, ready for a fight. <laughs> Say hello to my little friend. The organization robot robot attacked me with his giant buzzsaw and was swinging back and forth. He flew around me whilst attacking, leaving a trail of flames in his path that made it difficult to fight back. Ugh, he's too strong. With the little health I had, I was forced to teleport away with my newly acquired artifact and the blood knight. I reappeared inside of a bear forest. I looked around trying to find any signs of where I may be. I sense something strange about this place. Yeah, me too. Suddenly, corrupted creatures started walking towards me in all directions with glowing white eyes. I used my powers on them, but it wasn't effective. This must be the work of another creepy pasta. It has to be. There's no other reason. I manipulated the environment around me to trap the corrupted creatures. Who's doing this? Show yourself now. Out of nowhere, Hero Bride appeared in amongst the trees. You're not worthy of the next artifact. If you learn to control these creatures, I'll show you the way. He vanished into thin air, leaving nothing but a map in his place. I'll show him. I'm more than capable of learning how to possess these entities. I left the Blood Knight to watch the corrupted captives as I left to follow the path on the map. On days 43 to 46, I followed the map to a pyramid that Herobrine seemed to have built himself. The key to unlocking my new powers must be inside of here. I guess I'm not the only one who likes pyramids. I walked into the towering pyramid. The interior was fitting for the dwelling of an entity of cursed power. Carelessly, I walked through a near invisible curse of energy before I realized it was another dimension. What is this place? An entity with glowing eyes suddenly appeared before me and stared at me ominously. What are you? Where am I? It did not respond. Is this some sort of test? Without warning, they lunged directly at me and I teleported to evade them. Hey, watch it. I turned around and saw that there was now two entities. They charged at me and I teleported away again. With each attack I evade, they multiply more and more until I was surrounded by glowing eyed entities. Do all you guys do is duplicate? That's it. You will obey me. 
I activated my new ability, causing their eyes to change to glowing red. I've gained control over them. I can feel them at my beck and call. I reappeared back in the normal world. The trial was a success. Time to show that regular hero, Brian, who's boss. On days 47 to 50, I returned to the forest, but to my surprise, it had been set on fire by the organization. Oh no, little blood knight, he's in trouble. Help! Hang on, I'm coming. I teleported into the battle and began to fight off the guards. There were too many of them for me to fight off and protect the little blood knight alone. So I used my new powers to possess the entities I had captured. Get them, men. The entities obeyed me and began fighting the guards off with me. I had an upper hand against the enemies until the organization commander arrived. Your cursed powers are no match for my machines. Your machines have nothing on me. Just watch. He unleashed his laser attacks on me and I was able to fight back more than before. I threw massive boulders at him, shaking his airship. I summoned blood ice from the sky, which rained over our intense battle in hopes of freezing him in place. The commander used his flamethrower, melting the ice. I teleported away, trying to avoid his heavy attacks, which were successful. He used his airstrike attack on me as his final blow rendered me weak and in the end I was still not strong enough everyone retreat we all fled into the forest while we still had the chance to do so on days 51 to 54 I returned with all my cryptid friends as well as my new possessed allies you finally returned how goes the search for the artifacts are these new allies yes I picked them up along the way not all things are going well though what is bothering you blood hero Brian it's clear now more than ever I need more artifacts. Too bad Herobrine didn't give me that lead. It could have helped during my last battle. You ran into Herobrine? I see why you're troubled. His actions are shrouded in mystery. I actually found this during the battle. I think it could help. The little blood knight handed me a list of materials I needed to perform a ritual. This is our next key to the next artifact. Time to get to work. Thanks, little blood knight. I traveled to a field and managed to gather the first item on the list, a demon bone left in an unmarked grave. As I grabbed it, I saw organization robot guards approaching me in the distance. I ran to the closest cave and took cover before I could be spotted. That was close. Just then, I noticed a red glow emitting from the corner of the cave. Huh? What's that? I walked towards it, investigating the glow, finding the next item I needed on the list. The cursed candle! I grabbed it, but then suddenly, the ground began to tremble. I looked up to see that the cave was collapsing on top of us. Oh no! This place is a trap! On days 55 to 58, I was running through the collapsing cave, hoping to make my escape. Thanks to my powers, I was able to evade the incoming rubble by teleporting out of the way. I had just made it out, but suddenly I heard someone calling for help. Please, someone, anyone! Oh no, I can't just leave them. I followed the source of the screaming and found a bloodhound trapped on a platform. The cave was collapsing around him. Hang in there, I'm coming! I used my powers to build a bridge for them to cross over. Together, we escaped just as the cave collapsed to the ground. Thanks for saving me. I thought I was gonna get crushed in that cave. Of course, us blood entities have to stick together. How can I repay you? I'm looking for a vial of magic blood. Do you have any idea where it might be? I actually do. Come with me. On days 59 to 62, I followed the bloodhound to the location of the final item to find that it was being held at a player camp. Shouldn't we sleep to pass the night? It's fine. We're by a campfire, so mobs won't get too close. Time to give these guys a good scare. I snuck up behind them and then activated my powers. I came out of the ground in front of the players in a horrific display. Give me your blood. <laughs> The players ran for their lives, and I took their vial of blood magic for myself. Time to get this ritual started. I returned to my team and gave the little blood knight all the items he needed to complete the ritual. Perfect. I knew you would be able to get everything. We all worked together and got the perfect ritual set up right as the moon was at its peak. Together, we all performed the ritual, but instead of a blood artifact, a portal opened in front of me. Before I could react, an unnatural pull dragged me to the portal. Ah! 
In a moment, I got sucked inside to another dimension. On days 63 to 66, I appeared in the nether to find the next artifact waiting for me. Looks like the ritual worked after all. Time to get what I came for. Not so fast, bloody O'Brien. A mysterious cyborg half robot and half something unnatural flew towards me. Whoa, what are you? Another monster to join me to defeat the organization? Wrong, I work for the organization. I realize to defeat a monster, one must become one. Now that I have your powers, I will defeat you. He attacked me with his mutated powers, dealing tons of damage. I swung in with my blood attacks as he pummeled me with deadly lasers and big sonic blasts. In an effort to defend myself, I hurled some boulders in his direction. His mutant form granted to him by the organization made him super resistant to my attacks. No matter what I blasted him with, he tanked through all of them. I needed to find a solution quick. I'm going to turn you over to our leader. You're done for. I found an opening and went for the artifact, unlocking my blood sight. With it, my blood attacks were stronger and my life-stealing abilities were more powerful. Try to defeat me now. I used my powers on the organization experiment. The creature didn't stand a chance. Soon, I defeated him. I thought I was victorious. Until out of nowhere, a magma monster grabbed me and pulled me into one of the lava pools into the nether. On days 67 to 70, I thought I was going to be burnt up in the lava. But to my surprise, I survived. What's going on? I thought I wasn't going to make it. I placed a protection spell on you so we can talk. Wait, really? You are not trying to kill me? No. Like yourself, I too am being hunted by the organization. Those guys sure do get around. I know where the next artifact is. Really? Where? It's in the depths of the nether, but I would hurry if I were you. That organization is searching for it too. Thanks for the lead. There isn't a moment to waste. No problem. Hurry, go now, before the organization gets the next artifact. I swam deeper into the nether in search of the next artifact. Eventually, I arrived at a site where the organization was trying to drain a lava pool with pipes. They got here before me, but this must be where the artifact is. I better look around without being seen. I watched the organization members work from a safe distance before coming up with an idea. I got it. I'll teleport into one of those pipes. I teleported across the pipes as fast as I could until I made it into a pipe. I continued my journey deeper in, staying quiet to not alert the workers. On days 71 to 74, I arrived on the other end of the pipe to find a chamber with a door. I spotted some guards talking amongst themselves. I hid myself and tried to get close enough to listen to what they were talking about. The door won't budge no matter what we do. We've been at this for hours. Then blow it up by force. We're getting that artifact before the blood hero brine gets even stronger. Maybe we can use TNT. We have some spare left. TNT? They lined up some TNT at the door and ignited it, causing the entrance to explode open. Oh no, what have they done? The ground began to shake violently around the guards. Suddenly, a bloody monstrosity emerged from the entry. This guy looks like trouble. Maybe we shouldn't have opened the door. Foolish humans, you'll pay for disturbing this ritual site. He attacked them, showing his massive power, not giving the guards any room for escape. Even with their heavy duty gear, he defeated the organization members with no issues before setting his sights on me. Leave this place at once! Oh, hey, I don't like those guys either. Maybe we can talk about this. Without another moment, it attacked me. On day 75 to 78, I was fighting off with the Blood Guardian. He grabbed me with his tentacles, trapping me in his grasp. I teleported away, loose from his grip. A wave of tentacles emerged from the ground, surrounding the Blood Guardian, spiraling outwards towards me. I used my blood sight and slashed the tentacles away to get closer to him. But the Blood Guardian teleported away, just like me. I lunged towards him, but he blinded me, holding me captive in his grasp. I fought my way out and teleported away once again. He drew his sword out and swung it at me with immense amounts of power. I dodged it and retaliated with my blood scythe. Although I was using all of my powers, I was no match for this creature. I have to get that artifact. It's the only way I'll survive this fight. I stopped attacking and ran past the guardian and onto the chamber. Inside, the artifact sat waiting for me. Hey, stop right there! Nope! 
I grabbed the artifact, gaining five more hearts. I felt my body fill with electrifying energy, nothing I had ever felt before. I gained Herobrine's control of lightning. Unhand that artifact at once. The Guardian attacked again, but I used my new powers to make the Guardian back down. I was now too powerful for him. Look who's the strong one now. Your powers are nothing against mine, thanks to the artifact. You, you're strong. Maybe you're worthy after all. As he withdrew, accepting his defeat, the organization commander appeared out of nowhere. Ah, oh, you again. You're becoming a real pain, you know. Hello to you as well. Nice to see you here. He leveled an attack at me, but the Blood Guardian jumped in the way, blocking it with all the strength he had left. Run while you can, worthy one. Protect our kind. I teleported away as quickly as I could. Meanwhile, the Blood Guardian shielded me from the leader. Sadly, he ended up taking more damage than he could handle. The organization commander turned his sights on me. I'll avenge you, Blood Guardian. If it's the last thing I do, don't you worry. Thanks to his sacrifice, though, I was able to escape the area, leaving the organization commander behind. The organization will pay for this! On days 79 to 82, I returned to the overworld and began my search for the final artifact. Unfortunately, I didn't have a lead, so for a little while, I wandered aimlessly. I was starting to lose hope when I happened to spot a trail of leafless trees. Was Herobrine here? I raised my guard up since I was in Herobrine's territory. I continued walking, looking between the trees, spotting a trail up ahead. I followed the trail that eventually led me to a blood ocean where I could sense something calling out to me. Come into the ocean. I tried to shake off the voice inside of my head. No, I won't fall for this. Come, the ocean is calling for you. I stepped into the Red Sea, and soon I discovered an underwater monument. I reached out to touch it and was transported into a vision. I was now in another realm where Herobrine was waiting for me. It looks like you're worthy of the artifacts after all. I have the final one waiting for you. How can I get it? Complete my three trials and I will give you what you seek. I'll do anything, bring it on. The two of us teleported away to our first trial. On days 83 to 86, I reappeared in a forest inside of a mysterious realm. If you are able to manipulate more of this forest than me, then you will pass the first trial. And how does this prove anything? You've clearly been practicing this more than I have. If you don't complete the trial, you won't get the artifact. These are my rules. How can I be sure that I can even trust that you have the final artifact? You will know for sure, but what else do you have to lose? Right, let's get this over with. Hero Brian hovered forward and activated his abilities, showcasing his immense powers. A large selection of trees had their leaves vanish into thin air. You have seen my power. Now it is your turn. Here goes nothing. I moved to a portion that still had its leaves and activated my powers. Suddenly, I made the entire forest lose its leaves. Not only that, but the tree stumps became blood red. Wow, I did that? Very good. It appears that your power has already begun to pass my own. It's time for the next trial. Herobrine started to fly away as I teleported, following him. On days 87 to 90, I arrived at the second trial. We were in a village in the dream world. As blood hero, Brian, you must collect enough blood to feed your subjects. Ravage this village and obtain enough blood to fill this pool. I teleported into the village and began to ravage it with all of my powers. Face the wrath of blood hero, Brian. As I made my way through the village, I used my lightning powers to annihilate villagers. I teleported to different areas, using my scythe to take them out one by one. They tried to fight back, but ultimately stood no chance against me. Each villager that I defeated dropped a bucket of blood, which I kept in my inventory. Soon enough, I had dozens. After a lot of destruction, I returned to Herobrine and began to fill the pool with all the buckets I had acquired. Thankfully, I had just enough to meet my target goal. Very good. You passed this test. Now only one more remains in your way. What do I have to do? Defeat me in battle. Hero Brian attacked me. 
On days 91 through 93, I fought with the original Hero Brian himself. He used his darkness attacks to strike me and try to throw me off, but I came way too far to get defeated now. I'm gonna give it all I got. Looks like I'll have to bring everything I've got as well. Hero Brian started blasting dark rods at me, left and right. Using my blood ice powers, I managed to hit him as he was flying above me. We kept teleporting all around each other, making it harder for us to keep up with the other. Both of us had blood slashes, but his lack of a blood scythe didn't allow him to regenerate hearts like I did. Our lightning powers were intense, but mine were a bit stronger. Suddenly, he launched a massive black hole, causing me to get stuck. When I finally escaped, we continued to keep slashing and blasting at each other, battling to see whose powers were truly the strongest. Just give up already so I can get that artifact. You won't win this fight. I'm bigger, better, and stronger. You take me as a fool if you think this is my final form. He grew bigger and bigger before attacking me again. It was so difficult, but with my lightning powers, I finally conquered him. He shrunk back down to his original size. Great work. After everything you've done, you've earned this. He handed me the final artifact, granting me 10 hearts and Herobrine's dark rod powers. Thank you for everything. I won't let the organization kill any more of us. I suddenly transported back to the real world in front of the underwater monument once again. Just as I returned, I saw an organization underwater soldier surrounded by ferocious fish. With a simple signal, they swarmed at me. On days 90 to 96, I was being chased through the blood ocean by the horrible mutant fish. I tried to fight them in the ocean, but they were more agile than me in the waters. I used my dark powers on the fish as they came at me, attempting to fight me from all angles. Their leader was using his water gun and shot bubble beams at me from a distance. The fish kept getting more and more aggressive as well, while I teleported away, attacking as I went. I used my blood ice to annihilate some, but not all of them. Surrender now! Now, bloody Robrine, you can't fight us underwater. Well then, it's a good thing I don't have to. I use my power to make it back to shore and use my new darkness abilities on the mutant fishes in the water. What? This is impossible. My experiments won't be able to survive out here. Sounds like a personal problem. The mutant fishes got overwhelmed by my crushing power and I won the battle. No! All that remained was the water guard, who when I finished off, dropped a letter. I picked it up to read what it said. Defeat the blood hero, Brian. And once you do, nothing will stop the experimentation. All the creepy pastas will die in four days. Oh no, that sounds bad. I'm running out of time. I hurried back to my friends. I had to end this before it was too late. On days 97 to 98, I had returned to my allies, where they were all patiently waiting for me. Oh my gosh, you actually, actually did it. it. You found the last artifact. Yeah, I had to go through some trials, but eventually it was mine. Good job, Blood Hero Brian. I knew you'd be able to do it. Yeah, we're glad you came back in one piece. Thanks, everyone. I'm glad you're all doing good, too. So, now what? How do we stop the organization? Well, I found something else along my journey. Check it out, Alex. I handed her the letter I discovered, with information showing the organization's plans for the experimentation. This is sad. But now that you have all six artifacts, you might actually stand a chance of defeating these monsters. How are we going to reach the letter, though? The organization is massive. Have you forgotten? You have our help on your side. You're right. I have all my friends backing me. We will win this fight. That's right. Let's end this once and for all. Yeah! Let's stop those guys! Then there isn't a moment to waste. Let's go! On day 99, I arrived at the organization's headquarters with my creepypasta allies. We were ready to go to work. The place was crawling with guards, but I was already much stronger than I was at the beginning of my journey. Everyone, charge! Together, we all invaded the base, fighting tooth and nail to make our way in. Don't let up, guys. Keep on fighting. I took down a ton of guards with my powers while my allies watched my back. Bullets from the organization members could be heard piercing the air, flying towards my allies. Giant Alex jumped into the air, crushing the enemies under her, harming and dispersing them. The one-eyed robot flew into the air with her stomping, making it seem like they weighed nothing. 
The possessed minions rampaged after any enemy they saw and wouldn't stop attacking them no matter how much damage they had taken. I used my dark powers to pull in my enemies, making them focus on hurting me. My attacks were doing damage to the enemies, unlike before where I had to forfeit due to not being powerful enough. Fire began to form under our feet from the intense firing, but thanks to my blood ice powers, I was able to cancel out the fire. The battle was intense, but there was no clear winner. Finally, after after a tough battle, I made it to the entrance of the building, but I couldn't break inside. Stand back! I got this. I swiftly moved out of the way as Alex smashed through the wall, creating a large enough entranceway for me. We'll hold these guys off. Go for the leader when this will all be for nothing. Thanks, everyone. I won't let you down. I charged into the base for what I had hoped to be the final battle. On day 100, I arrived inside of the base to find the organization commander waiting for me. Well, if it isn't the blood hero, Brian, that's been causing so much trouble. That's right. I won't stop until your plans are foiled. Foolish cryptid. This organization was built with only one mission in mind, and that was to kill all of you. I'm going to ensure that it happens. He attacked me, and I braced myself. He charged, shooting at me with his minigun and surging lasers in my direction. Before I knew it, he used his rocket launchers on me. I retaliated with my lightning powers, flashing in my defense. He then used his flamethrower and even more rocket launchers than before, blasting me constantly and launched them up as he flew around above me. I teleported all over while using my frozen blood ice powers to get the upper hand. His rocket skull powers were so strong and before I knew it, he launched an aerial strike at me, catching me off guard. He flew out of reach where I couldn't get to him anymore, firing missiles at me left and right. So I teleported up to the second floor to get to him, continuing to fight. His rocket launchers were going everywhere everywhere, blasting the catwalks I was standing on, and I kept teleporting to avoid his hits. I finally captured him, using my giant black hole, making him fall. Not bad, you've gotten strong, but you can't stop this. He used his ultimate move, an aerial strike. I felt my body taking immense damage, but I couldn't die here, not now. I endured the pain for my friends who were counting on me. I fought back with my black hole attacks until his machinery began to malfunction. No, this can't be. Your time is up. I killed him once and for all and saved the day. Blood Hero Brown! Amen.